everyone. Welcome live again from Crisis Ed Fellowship on Zoom and on FB Live. So while we're doing here, we're also in on Zoom and many people are also watching uh, with us. And today also we have this public uh, you know, message over at Facebook social media. And uh, you know, you, you don't even know uh, behind the scenes how a lot some people are actually uh, texting us and how we could help them. You know, there are countries and evangelists and pastors from different countries who have already contacted us. And so our medium is actually reaching uh, souls and most of all reaching leaders. So we thank God for the opportunity today. So today is a very timely topic about God's peace in me. Why do I have to entitle this message of God's peace in me? Because nowadays, we need to know that we have God's peace in us. Because around us, we cannot have control, right? But within us, we can have control. And God will always be in control of our very lives. I love this promise of Jesus. I so love this. Every time that I am in a turmoil based on challenges and many things in life, you know, because I'm not immune to challenges and trials. So I am a pastor and a preacher of the gospel, even apostles before. They're not immune to all these human pressures and also human sickness. Still in the world, we are still in the flesh and we are susceptible to anything that will harm us or us being in danger. And Apostle Paul have written a verse about that, that in all these things, he was more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, his Lord. Amen. So he says this in John 16, 33. This is Jesus' promise to all of his disciples. And he said this, I've said these things to you so that you will have peace in me. Take note of that. Peace in Christ. In him, in Christ. In the world, you have distress or you will have distress. But be encouraged. There's an exclamation point. Remember that courage is like a shout. Come on, cheer up. And then he says, why? I have conquered the world. Amen. Remember that the world by default has been handed over to Satan. And since then, he's been cruel enough to actually oppress us, enslave us, and put all things about all the wicked things and the evil things that he can actually, you know, mar and scar all of us, right? Because of the sins of our forefathers that we believe the lie ever since. And so if not for the intervention of God the Father that he sent Jesus Christ for us, we are all at a loss. And forever, we will die from the moment we're born will we we'll die miserable. Wala tayong pag-asa. There's no hope for all of us. Okay? So we have to understand what this God's peace, this kind of peace that we and you and I should have. Amen? So let's have a look. So Jesus promised peace to his disciples before he left earth and ascended back to God the Father. He left this great promise of peace to all, right? So remember how Jesus came into the earth and was prophesied by Gabriel to Mary that there will peace, you know, peace. He was greeted with, she was greeted with peace on earth, goodwill to men, right? That's the beginning where the earth was invaded by this peace of God that will emerge and will start through the person of Jesus Christ. And until death, he made peace for all of us to God. Amen. And then he says, my peace I give to you. Later on, we'll see all those truths that what Jesus has given us in us is not just ordinary peace. It is a supernatural peace that he carries himself while on earth in flesh and blood like one of us, and yet he, that peace has 
uh, you know, controlled him, has, you know, uh, sustained him until death. And now when he was resurrected and was about to ascend to heaven and he ascended, he said, okay, disciples, I will leave you my peace. It is God the Father's peace that was on him and the Holy Spirit's peace. God's peace, the trying God's peace was actually promised to his disciples, the followers of Jesus. Amen. So God's peace is available to those who will know Jesus. You will not have this peace unless you make Jesus as your Lord and Savior and he invades the very essence of your humanity. So then from that, you are going to have the God kind of peace that will carry you through in your humanness. Okay, so let's have a look. What is this peace in the Bible? So here we go. Shalom is actually the Hebrew word for peace. And in Wikipedia, it means all this. Just memorize this because or speak this often because this is what it meant. It's not just one word. In the Hebrew, in, uh, in, according to the Jews, when you speak this, it's like the whole lot of blessings of God on your life. And here it is. It means peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. It can also mean both hello and goodbye. So they use that. When they meet someone, when they are going to get into a house, or they will bid goodbye. So shalom, shalom, shalom. So it's more of like a greeting that carries a God kind of greeting. It's not just a hello, hello, hi, the ordinary greetings that we have. When you speak shalom, it is a God kind of peace. So you speak shalom to anything, any friend that needs this kind of peace, right? So this peace is not of the world, okay? This peace is really God's peace. Who God is, and he carries this peace, that's the kind of peace that we are also given by him. He is peace to you and I, amen? So, you know, if you're talking about God, he's a super, supernatural God that he is not shaken, but what evil is happening around and what Satan is actually controlling man that, you know, they're not a clue that God is just standing and staring and that he knows the very end of Satan and that he's not just silent of what he's doing, but Satan is actually the one just doing his own thing. But God, on the other hand, is doing a wondrous thing more so to protect his children in spite of the many things that are happening around them, God's peace, his kind of peace will be given to each one of us as soon as we have Christ in us and that we have to avail that every single day. So it is given and is available only to God's people, his saints. And to those who will cry out, of course, God hears that and God knows the heart if they want God's peace then Father God also somehow would allow these people, even though they're not really yet a people of God, sons and daughters of God, yet if they ask peace in the middle of chaos and now in wars, God will protect them and God will give them that peace. And how many of those stories, miracles, that even in during the war in the, you know, the Holocaust, many Christians have just prayed to God and they were spared. How God provided miracles that they have actually survived that very horrific, terrible enslavement and uh, you know um, uh, oppression of the enemy. Okay, so shalom is what we all have as people of God, and that entails all this. So you know, if you speak it again, again, it is one of those. Great weapons that you can speak and declare over your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So God's peace is the almighty God's peace. Okay, let me just move this. Jesus, as God, gave us his peace 
not just any beast. Okay? So the God's beast is the almighty God's beast. It is not from the world. It is his peace that he has given to each and every one of his children. So Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We're going to really see this on the scriptures. It's a gift to his saints. And it's a gift to you, this peace of God. Next is his peace can't make us stumble in any way. All right. The peace that you have, you may feel the sting, but it will not make you stumble. You will stand up and be steady. The next one is it is perfect peace because it comes from God. It is absolutely perfect. Okay, there will be nothing add to it. There will be nothing that will be lessened from it. This peace is perfect for the right situation and for the right need. Next is it guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This kind of peace is always in the boundaries of just being in Christ. There's nothing that this peace will go away from what is in Christ or what is in the word of Christ. If your peace comes from the outside source of who Christ is, his nature and his word, that is not from God's peace. Because God's peace guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The next piece is what this God's peace. It's peace amid trials and temptations. Somehow, no, you will not understand that the gravity of your problem sometimes, and you feel the sting, and yet, late, you know, you, you've got this element of being steady that, yes, you may cry, you may grieve for a little while because the Bible says that, but joy comes in the morning. You are not at all worried at all. It's not because that you are numbed or you are deadened or stone-hearted because somehow we can get to that. But if you have God's peace amidst trials and temptations like what happened to Jesus, like what happened to the Apostle Paul and all the Christians in the Acts, Book of Acts, they are in so much oppression that even in the you know, fiery trials of being persecuted and being eaten by the lions. They walk through that entrance and just let it be, right? That is a peace, you know, and like for us, there's just a news and we are rattled and tattered and destroyed. And even like we're shaken up and we cower and we hide, you know? But this peace that we have in Christ you're just going to stand. And amidst the trials and temptations, you will have this peace. You will not believe it because I have experienced too much of a peace in spite of the trials that I've faced myself, you know, um, you know in danger and also in some, uh, you know, human, uh, you know, proceedings, okay? Where this court, where this, all this, that you will think, oh my gosh, this is so shameful. But then you stand amidst that and you've got peace and you know you are right in God, then you'll just stand. And before you knew it, everything is settled on your favor. This is God's peace that you and I are just always being given a chance by God with all of our problems to just actually have this peace settled and that it rules over our hearts and minds. It's peace, this God's peace, that overcomes the world. It is peace that overcomes the world. All right? Because that's what Jesus said. I have overcome the world. Nothing in Jesus' hands he did not overcame by the cross. Everything was done, paid for by the cross. That's the very reason why up to this time, uh, all preachers and servants of God keeps preaching about and avail the salvation God offers to them or they will miss out of what Jesus intended for every one of his believers and every one of his disciples. So that is about God's peace, okay? So here are your scriptures. For unto us a child is born, this is about Jesus' prophecy before, and the government, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, is this his name? 
wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. If Satan is a prince of the world and chaos, Jesus is his contender and prince of peace. He rules peace. In fact, he's not the contender. Satan is not the contender of Jesus. Satan now is under the authority of Jesus because Jesus, he doesn't have any more power to rule the earth. It was stripped off by Jesus. Amen. And then John 14, 27 says, that's why Jesus was so confident that when he left, he says this peace. I live with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. See, sometimes the world is offering us a different kind of peace and we bite the bait. And somehow our problems are not solved because we go to the ways of the world to find peace, but we never found God's peace, Christ's peace that is available to us. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So your heart should not be troubled and should not be afraid. Why? Because if you have Jesus' peace, that settles the matter. He is going to find a way so you, you will have the desired peace that for long Satan has enslaved you and be, made you believed a lie, deceived you. And yet God sees the overall picture of your life. And for the godly, for the disciples, he'll find a way that you will deserve that great peace that you are looking for. Amen. So here we go again. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall stumble or offend them. So great peace are for those who really love the word, the word of God is God's word. That's where we get all the cues for our peace, the secrets to our peace. And if we get those secrets, nothing about it will offend us. It will always be on our favor. Amen? So in Isaiah 26, 3, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You see that man whose mind stays in Christ and who trusts in God, God will give what? He'll keep your mind in perfect peace, right? So you stay your mind on who God is and trust him and you are in your perfect peace in spite of it is confusing and putting your soul into shaking, all right? God will still give you that perfect peace. The next one, do not be anxious about anything. See, is, it, is there any stress right now or any anxiety right now? I do have one, one right now. And I have questions that is unsettling at the moment right now. But in every situation, this is what you have to do by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Okay, so the thing is, when we do have problems, we just go to the corner or just go to the malls or just go to the clubs and just fill ourselves with something that will not actually engage into having and achieving God's perfect peace. Because we are going to be anxious, but here is the secret. And then the peace of God which transcends all understanding. It's like uh, overriding all, all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. Again, all, the, all the, um, the aim of all the trials is to be in Christ Jesus. Your heart will be mine still in Christ Jesus. You'll never get lost. That is the very thing because Satan will attack us from the outside of problems and chaos, confusion, that sometimes we are not the ones who actually created it, right? But then when we get to not be anxious and let our spirits connect to God in prayer and thanksgiving, right? Then our hearts and minds will be guarded in Christ Jesus. That peace, Christ, will guard it will guard our minds and our hearts. 
to be stable, right? So next, look at Jesus in the midst of chaos. Look at what he did. Look at what happened to him. The peace of God sustained him with not saying anything. Look at this. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. To me, that means peace, right? You Somehow, some of us are really more open to our mouth when someone oppress us, right? He did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. It was like he's just letting himself, okay, do what you want to do. Get on. Come on. Strike me more. Do, because he knew that what's happening to him is God's will. That's why he's silent. As a sheep before its shearers is silent. He was like a sheep that is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Because guess what? The peace that he has in finding God's will and doing it perfectly as he was commanded and he submits to that will, he did not even argue because he knew already what was required of him as a savior. Amen? So what is God's will for you? Right? Maybe because the reason why somehow you're oppressed is because God wants you to get to him in prayer. And somehow we don't need your mouth to fight. You need to only go to him in prayer. Amen? So you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you, that's God's peace, Jesus, is greater than he who is in the world. Now, look at this one. It is like God is telling all of us, his children, hey, there's nothing that you cannot conquer, lady or son or daughter, because I am greater than all of them, okay? So give Jesus always the chance in the midst of our trials and tribulations to have his way. Somehow all you have to do is just kneel down in prayer or even fast because you just invoke God in the midst of those things that is concerning you. I mean, just look at the, at the story of Job. Everything was stripped of back towards the end. He got it doubled and more. And God was pleased when he understood that all of the trials are just meant for him to just let God be in his life. And like Jesus, come on, strip me off, break me. But then towards the end, when he understood that God was with him, then God was with actually him. And he manifests the God's peace, the fruit of that God's peace. Amen. So next, let's move on. Staying in this God kind of peace. How will it stay and we be unmoved? Okay, now we've got God's peace. And what is that peace, right? Now we have to stay in that kind of God kind of peace. Now, how are we going to do that? Number one, let this peace rule in our hearts is in this problem that you have now is peace ruling in your hearts or is it not let christ peace god kind of peace rule in the matter right how you're going to do that again number two let this peace speaks to us and we hear how can we hear that of course through the word of god and when we hear the word of god we you know what sometimes the lord will uh, bring avenues for you to hear his voice. Sometimes it's from a little kid. Sometimes it's from the music. And he speaks and you just capture that piece. See, there was a time, you know, that God uses a popular music to speak to me because at that moment, I felt like no value, unworthy. It's like, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think of myself as like, I've done a lot for myself and built up for myself. And I've been a good wife or a good mother and a good worker, a good minister. And yet during those times, all of these people are just against me. And I felt like really unbeautiful or unvalued. But then did you know when I went out to the shopping mall, God just uses the song of Christina Aguilera. And I heard it vividly, that, that, that one-liner as if the Holy Spirit is speaking. And he says, you are beautiful, no matter what they say, right? So God really, I picked that up and I heard that. 
And it's just a swapping one liner of God through that music. So God sometimes speaks to us in an audible voice that we need to hear that piece. And it just like silence all the the uh, you know all, all the the things the blaming the attack of those words that is really and I knew that Satan was playing up at the time because I am moving into surrendering yielding my life in service. Number three, let this peace as the fruit of the spirit be seen in us because somehow we need you know like sometimes you know pastors or leaders sometimes. We have a way to actually know this verse and that we have to be at peace in the midst of chaos. Because if we are not going to show peace, then what will happen now to our, you know, children of the faith? They will also cower in fear, right? So peace must be seen and we rely on the Holy Spirit for that. Also, let this peace control our minds. Is this God's peace? controlling our minds or are we battling over it because somehow your personality natin, you know our strong personality like i'm one of those i'm a strong willed person but i know what is right and wrong but somehow your wrong right is not really right to others sometimes it's wrong to them because it's a different per perception and opinions by others when you speak some words that they don't actually are ready to hear or they don't want to hear right so for us is let us have that peace and let it control our minds we must be the one to let that peace control our minds next let this peace be sown to harvest righteousness okay all of god's people needs to be sowers of righteousness and what one of those things that makes us Sowers of righteousness is to actually sow peace. It's there in the in the scriptures in James 3 8, and we're gonna have a look of that. And the next one is let this peace works for our enemies. Okay, now if you are bombarded by enemies, right? Jesus has a word for that for our enemies. If you do not know this verse, then actually you're going to make enemies more down the track. But if you know this verse, God will find a way that even your enemies will actually come together with you and be reconnected or become your best friends later. Next, last but not the least, these are all seven things. The first one, we have the God kind of peace description. This one is how you can stay in this God kind of peace. Last is that his peace always be our aim and identity. See, now that the world is in chaos, I hope that us people of God will be identified as men and women of peace, not identified as men and women of chaos, right? And start that in the home, right? Especially the leaders of the home. If you are not in peace, the whole house will not be in peace, right? So, you know, the tradition of our culture is bad because somehow the fighting of Filipinos are totally hot-blooded. We got that from the Spaniards that we are easily tempered and easily angered. That's why, you know, the chaos from neighbors, you know, it is really feisty, okay? It can't be worn unless someone really would just admit or would just be in the middle. You know, we don't have to go to Tulfo or Rufo, whoever that is that people goes to because as people of God that must be our aim and that must be our identity people must see us as being people of peace amen next one let's see all these verses let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body see we're all called to peace one body you were called to Peace and be thankful. You are not called to fight. We are called to be peacemakers. The next one is Psalm 85, 8. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. 
Okay? He promised this peace to his people, but on the condition you will not go back to your old life. So peace is always abiding with you. Why? Because you have Jesus in you. The God kind of peace, the shalom peace, is always there daily with you. But if you miss it out by swerving and doing the things that you're not supposed to as people of God, then comes the invitation of chaos into your peace. And no wonder we go through problems, right? You see, problems that are not done by us or created by us, right? You just have to be steady. But problems outside, you have to be steady, but let these people find out about their own problems to solve. Because somehow if you entertain that, you get to you know, be shaken up with your own peace. So find your peace within you. Because if you are a man of peace and a woman of peace, then God is with you and God will be with you to become peacemakers. Okay? And you are not going to go alongside who are doing chaos. Leave them in their own demise or demise. If they are destroyers of peace, let them be. Because as you, far as you know, you are walking in peace. So let God protect you, the God of peace that is with you, within you that conquers the world. Amen. But the spiritual nature, this is about our nature, produces love, joy, peace. Okay. The spiritual nature that we have as being Christ children and we have the Holy Spirit is peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There are no laws against things like that or these, no? So when it comes to peace, there's no law, okay? So you go, peace is like a fruit. You, you share that, you, you exude that, you manifest that, okay? But it is maintained and it's only increasing in peace when you have the Prince of Peace ruling and reigning in your hearts and minds. Now, the mindset on, of the, on the flesh is death. So you, if your mind, you're a Christian, and then your mind is always fleshly, right? But the mindset on the spirit is life and peace, all right? So if you want to really have that life and peace, then you set your mind on the things of the spirit, okay? You don't go away from that. If you do something against the spirit of God, you grieved him and also against the word, the precepts of God. Again, you invited what is that thing that is of the flesh, which is death. It will be death in your relationship with your wives and family and children or husbands because your mind is always set on what is doing evil. Every time the evil feeds you to do things that is not in line with the word of God, you do it. And so you invited, not peace, inviting peace, but death. And it's of the flesh. But when your mind is always set, meaning set, that is you. You're going to have the dial to set your mind in the spirit always. What does the spirit want? Is this approved by the spirit? Is this is the nature of the Holy Spirit? Will God be glorified in this? Because you've got the spirit within you. Then you are more inviting God kind of life and God kind of peace. And that is what it is about this scripture. Okay? So again, peacemakers who sow in peace, what's this? Raise a harvest of righteousness. See, when you are a person who is always a peacemaker, it's hard. This job is hard. I tell you, sometimes you go meddle in a situation of two different strong personalities or individuals or groups, you're in the middle, you'll be the one to blame. But I tell you, keep your ground, keep yourself steady in peace, because when God sees your very motives, you'll be out of the chaos of these two that you wanted to make peace together, because you are the one who is a peacemaker, amen? And you will raise a harvest of righteousness. Later on, these people will come back to you and says, you know, if I only had listened to you, then this will not happen. Because I've seen many people, you give counsel to them, but they pursue 
their rebelliousness, their pride, their arrogance, and later on, they're not actually in line with what the path that God was about to give them in peace. Right next, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even the man's enemies live at peace with him. So look at this. Do you want to have peace with your enemies? Because somehow your enemies is in your own household, right? That's what Jesus says. Your enemies, first enemies, is in your own household. How do I know that? I've been into that many times, right? No one who has a family is not having problems with their own family members. But if your ways please the Lord, he makes even the man's enemies live at peace with him. So we have the opportunity to live in the ways of the Lord and please him. Because when you please the Lord, everything about all these enemies attacks on you and, you know, malign you, hurt you, they will come and they will know that they are wrong and that they will ask for apologies or for forgiveness. And then again, you have to be ready to be in peace. Amen. Because we continuously are called to be peaceful and peacemakers. Next is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This is part of the Beatitudes, right? The, 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 um, the preaching or the message from the Mount. It says the famous Sermon on the Mount, one of which is, blessed are the peacemakers. But they will be called children of God. So this is your identity. If you are a home wrecker, and if you are a troublemaker in your relationship, in your house, most of all, number one is your house, you're a Christian, your church, your first, then your identity is nonetheless is not a child of God. Because this is what it says right here. The peace of God is part of our identity, the peacemaker, the peacemaking. Always you think about how to unite in peace, harmony, wholeness, tranquility in your house. Because if you don't, then again, besides your identity, you invite death. All right? So let's move on. The source of God's peace versus world's peace. Saan natin makukuha yung God's peace? Okay? Because most of the time, Christian style and then the way we actually get the source of our peace is totally out of line. And no wonder we, we, our, our peace is not achieved. Our peace is just, our chaos is just prolonging its problems because the way you deal with peace is not of God. And most of all, it's escapism. nag escape ka parate, ignore ka parate. And this is what it is. So God himself versus self-worldly source. This is an advice to saints only, all right? So merong God himself your source or merong kang self-worldly source. God's peace is life and eternal security versus temporal peace based on things and people. We normally get to the point of, I, I saw some, uh, you know, some of the believers and also there will be at times when, you know, women, when they are, <laughs> I've, I've talked to women that they're, uh, you know, coping up with uh, the unsettling of their marriage with their husbands and, you know, their emotional void, not satisfied from the expectancy of the husband. Somehow they go to shopping. Doon sila nagpupunta. You know, that's a temporal about things. And sometimes they go, some of the women that I have heard is just, they use the credit card to the max just to get even to the void that the partner gave them. Okay? So, and people sometimes, we go to the wrong crowd. Right? Instead of doing what is right with God's people, we always go to the wrong crowd. Okay? We'll find those crowds where we have to get them. So God's peace achieved through the word and the spirit. This is only where we can get that peace. It's always a source of God. His word and the spirit versus worlds. 
is through many self-inflicted, damaging, addictive, if you're not careful, means that leads to life destruction later, such as. So yung mga world's source of peace, it is sometimes self-inflicting that it will cause damage more and becomes addictive pa. And that will lead to life destruction later, such as through this source, drugs, okay, or vices, like, you know, smoke. Saints, I've seen saints who have trouble in their hearts because they are not accustomed to having all those godly disciplines, which is go to the word and be in a church, be with, you know, uh, mature people that they can actually pattern or be guided from. They go to places where there's these people are, the drugs, right? So they go to that option. So Christians, ito na may options sa drugs. Okay, so what happens to them? They are not being healed or they're being held captive. and They did not achieve the peace that they are getting. They're more going away from God. Next one that's a source for all the values. I've seen some men that they're coping with their, uh, you know, with their problems of sin, right? And they were caught. They go to sexual immorality more. Rather than having a wholesome counsel, saints here, they go to, to fill the void to commit sexual adultery, fornication, prostitution, and all this that is not in the line, but actually add up more chaos to them and more affliction to them and more damaging, destructive uh, you know, um, situations in the home life. Okay, so another one, oops, this one is, I've seen this also to many saints doing this. And, you know, alcohol, if there are too much in the brain, minds, they do not go to God because of the, you know, disappointments as his people are doing against them, right? Instead of being, you know, going with the motion of, uh, you know, going with worship or to go to a friend, which is, you know, will accept and hear you, you go to alcohol, right? And alcohol, if you know that, if you're not, uh, you know, if they're not careful, that will be always your turning point or your turning, uh, you, you, your first remedy to your chaos. You go where it is, like you go with friends that can bring you to clubs and just, well, how do you do that? Because in alcohol, you your conscious mind is being drawn into you know a, a zero consciousness and that it just they think that you have or, or you think or you me thinks that it can actually erase the problem but it doesn't it's still the next morning after the hangover you still carry that problem because god is sending you a message Get rid of everything that is the, the flesh, the ways of yours, and get to my ways, right? But again, we always go to those things that is not good for us. We have a tendency always to go to them. I mean, that, and that is sometimes we have to ask the Lord why that all these temporary things to achieve peace and it's away from God's ways and methods is always your remedy when it comes to your emotional baggage or void. And then again, we go to uncontrolled emotions. Of course, if you're under all these drugs, this alcohol, and you know, you, you'll have uncontrolled emotions that leads to self-harm such as worse is suicide. And this one, family and relationship breakdowns. If you're found out, and you're not dealing with counsel, with consecrating your life, re total repentance is not just, you know, remorse. When you're found and you become again and you're caught up again and again and again and again, that is actually fooling God, fooling yourself. Number one, you fool yourself because you're the ones who always promise and ask forgiveness and apology to the same person who is your loved one, your wife or your children. And yet you're caught up with all these things that you do anyhow without even changing, 
right? Or not transform. Or not. No, sabi nga, one of our brothers says, that person is unregenerated. That person really doesn't know what it is to really surrender and give your life to Jesus. And so ultimately separation will come to this family breakdowns and then ultimately to divorce. Now, in the U.S., there is a record that 50% of married couples are on divorce. These are Christians. These are not just unbelievers. Christians, all right? And it's sad because somehow people do not understand the worldliness, of the source of this worldliness uh, or to peace rather than to go to God's peace. The advice is this. We have to seek God in our chaos. And then you seek God, the trusted spirit-filled counselors, not just any counselor, but somehow counselors are, some are money tests, some counselors are not really licensed, right? So you have to really go to spirit-filled counselors, or sometimes those who have license, those who know confidentiality. The next one is worship and praise, because in worship and praise, demons hate that, right? And when you worship and praise some house, there's miracles that will happen. And Psalms, David knows what praise means in his life. Praise has throughout his life in the midst of all these family breaks up and suicide, you know, all these family things going on. And even in his ministry as being anointed king in service of God, he made a lot of these praises because that is only way to actually address his issues towards God. Praises. That's why I was able to actually made more than 90 or 200 praises, which is in the book of Psalms recorded. Then seek his word with the problem. For instance, you need healing, just go to healing. For instance, you have a problem with anger, go to anger. There are these books that is just, you know, alphabetical that will help you really seek God's word about many problems in our lives and they're available to us to buy or avail of and then when you seek the word you must obey and be moved with it we don't just leave it and just read it if god says leave this leave it and get a counsel get confirmation from a counselor and from the word that is how you're going to maintain peace because god is for your peace all right is that going to bring you to a relationship or something that you are always having chaos. For years, you're dealing with a person that has brought this chaos in your life. And then you just stay. It's not what God wants. And you're not just going to just be played up with these people that, you know, forgive, forgive, forgive. But then there's no change of their hearts and no really sincere consecration of repentance. And God hates that. You will not achieve peace. These people will not achieve peace because of the way they play up the games of the peace that they should find in God as being people of God to getting most of the time to worldly peace and their self ways off to peace. It's nothing go not going to work with our sources of peace if it's our flesh. If our source of our peace is the world, nothing will be remain of God's peace in us if it's not, if it's away from the premises of God's word, godly counselors, and his word, and seeking him. So let's look at these verses. Behold, this is his promise. I will bring to it health and healing, and I will heal them. Did you see that? You're in chaos, you're in turmoil. The Lord will bring health and healing, and I will reveal to them abundance of peace. And what is that peace? Shalom peace, which is prosperity, security, stability, and truth. Who will bring health and healing? It is God. And abundance of peace. So what you are having right now in the midst of this, if you totally move to the God kind source of peace and remain in that path, not having a compromise to the world, then later on, what you will see when you're done with this chaos, God will give you health and well-being and abundance of peace later. You will be the one who will prosper 
not the ones who brought chaos to your life. They are losers because they are the ones who offended and they're the ones who have the wicked plots by Satan and has done it without any you know, fear of God in their lives. So again, Hosea 14, 4, it says here, I will heal their waywardness and love them freely for my anger has turned away from them. Somehow you have really uh, messed up your life or messed up somebody else. Have you been wayward? If you're not going to go to God and find peace with God and peace on the people that you're supposed to have peace to in the steps that God will want you to step in and not ignore those steps, then God will take away his anger and heal your waywardness and will go put you back where you belong to that prodigal son, uh, royalty and rulership again. Next. The wise counselors, Proverbs 19.20, get all the advice, all, not just one, all the advice and instruction you can. All instructions, get it. So you will be wise the rest of your life. Right? Do you want to be wise and peaceful for the rest of your life? Then get all the advice and the instruction you can. You see, even now, the great pastors and leaders they also are, have gone through many healing and deliverance. I myself have gone through many of those too. You know, I get all the advice as much as I can. What's wrong with this? What is happening? And I keep on asking these mentors, these coaches. I read books and, and see you will be wise for the rest of your life. Okay? Next, let's move on. Where no counsel is, this is what happens if you don't have counsel the people fall or you will fall. You will go down the path where unbelievers will go. You're not the winners towards the end of your life. But in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. So you will remain be in peace if you have godly counselors around you. Multitude, not just one. And these counselors are a company of like-minded, spirit-filled believers. This will not cushion you, especially those prophetic. They will tell you what's wrong behind the scenes because they see from the Holy Spirit. They've got a gift of discernment to tell you if it's you're the one who is at, it's the, on the wrong or you or the other person that has wronged you. All right. The, again, the essence of the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Get on the word. That's a very reason. Like if you are just a new Christian at CHF, the students, we give away all this Bible for you to take note of your own life. And with the Bible, it becomes your map and your blueprint for your journey to God. Amen? For eternal life. So if we have God's peace, we live in peace and aim for peace till the end. If we do have God's peace, that is really God is, you are just God's instrument right here on earth to live in peace and aim for peace till the end. You're a peacemaker. And it says, his final brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, comfort, be of one mind, live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. See, if you are a man and a woman of peace, if I am a woman of peace, I will have God's comfort and I will have the love of God and peace to always abide in me. God will never forsake someone who live in peace and aim for peace. Are you a peacemaker? Or has your peace been shaken up? Then if your peace has been shaken up, by some force of evil in the house or from somewhere else source, then you go to God and find out. The Holy Spirit will tell you. I have asked the Holy Spirit many times and the Holy Spirit exposed, 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 exposed. And I knew that I have to really just wait for the time that God will actually intervene and this perfect peace will come continuously and abide in me in my life. So it has been that thing in my life. Somehow, I just have to keep my mouth shut 
and in silence because I knew that God knows his El Roy who sees and he knows the motives and intents of every heart. So be at peace. You've got the God kind of peace if you're a Christian and live in that peace and you aim for that peace for as long as you are living right here in planet Earth. Malapit na po ang ating perfect peace to come when our Lord Jesus Christ will bring us to a new heaven and a new earth where he will rule. From then on, we will never experience any sorrow, grief, and pain. Because that's what the Bible says. When he rules the heaven and new earth, new heaven and new earth, there's no chaos. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We're no longer here in this earth where the Prince of the world is still ruling. But then again, inside of us, even though we are in this world of evilness, and chaos inside of us, there is a conqueror who already overcomes the world. Amen? So we rely on this peace that we have, the God kind of peace, the shalom peace of God, that we can always ask to rule and reign in our hearts and minds. Because our hearts and minds, that is where the devil wants to always attack us. Because once our mind is full of chaos, then erratic behavior will arise. And we will behave and act in such a manner and way that is not of peace and God's peace. Amen. So let's remember this. So here are the scriptures so beautiful, which I'm going to leave. And then later on, those two powerful quotes about peace. Now may the Lord of peace himself, he is the Lord of peace, right? Give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. What a beautiful declaration for all of us today. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself, the God kind of peace, the shalom peace of God, that's his peace, give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Is that possible that we will be at peace like the Lord is? Yes, we do. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And here it is about these quotations. You can miss one verse. It's one verse right here. Finally, brethren, we, we have the, the God of peace shall be with us, right? And this next verse. And so grace is a quotation, two quotations, which I'm going to leave with you. Grace is the free favor of God. Peace, however, is the condition which results from its perception. What does it mean? When you've got the grace of God, the favor of God in you, peace is somehow the condition wherein you perceive the grace that God has given you, right? If grace is sufficient for you, if grace is given to you in your times of weakness, then peace is achievable. And it is the condition which results from your understanding of how grace operates. And one of how grace operates is this. Grace is not given for us as a license to sin. All right? So we've got the free favor of God. We get all the favors from God because we are his children. But grace is not available to us if we use that again and again for us to go to our sins and loving the sin more than using grace for our passion and service and love for Christ. So in other words, peace is only achieved when you understood the work of grace or per your perception about grace. See? So you now know what it is about peace and the grace of God that works together. That's from Ed H.L. Gouch. The last one is peace comes fr not from the absence of trouble because this is what we're always thinking. Oh, trouble na naman to, Right? So, ito na naman, problema na naman to, okay? It's not the absence of trouble. It is actually coming from the presence of God. That in the midst of you, being around your workplace or around your, your school or around your teacher staff, and there's one there that's just, you know, in, in turmoil because we don't know what's happening with the heart or his soul, Right? But you are at peace because you're not because of the absence of trouble right there, but the presence of God within you. 
So peace comes not from the absence of trouble. We will have tribulation, I tell you that. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, Sabini Jesus, for I have conquered the world. So within you, outside this chaos, but within you is God's peace that you have. So avail of that God's peace. Speak to the peace, shalom of God to be there if you are in chaos. Amen. So how is our peace today in these perilous times? Because now we are actually receiving everything, you know, like that alone in India, the Christians are persecuted. They are actually, you know, the girls are being raped and even their, uh, you know, chests are being stripped off, right? Skin to skin, they were left on the streets. So that's how they're doing now. And that's what they've done to the, you know, God on Gaza. We have to examine our relationship to God now. Do you know God? Do you know this God kind of peace? Do you know the God of peace? If you don't know him, you must do it right now and get to know Jesus as a prince of peace in your life. Through that measure, his presence that brings us his perfect peace, his peace, shalom, peace of God. So based on our relationship with God, if you know him or not, if you're increasing deeply in your relationship with God, that measures the presence of God in you that brings his perfect peace. You will have God's peace all the time as you grow in knowing Christ Jesus, your Lord, who is your Prince of Peace. And you will have that, his peace, right? You don't need to speak like what he is. He was shut up in his mouth, never opened up his mouth, and is silent because what's inside of him is what's important. Shalom, peace of God is with him. He knew that he is doing God's will in the midst of that oppression, trials, temptations, and chaos. So I, may I pray to you that today let us ask God for you to know him, which is the Prince of Peace, Jesus, so that he will reside with you and be the one that you can be dependent to inside of you that will bring you to places of peace. Amen? And you abide in that peace for our lives. So let me pray with you. And I hope that you will come pray with me if you never know this piece of peace. And so let's pray and follow after me wherever you are. So Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. I know that I am in a chaos right now. My life is in a mess. I need you today. Lord, I know that I have sins that I have committed. Cleanse me by your precious blood. Forgive me for all of my sins. Since the time I was birthed, forgive also the, my parents' sins. Lord, forgive us all. Wash us by the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ, that makes us cleanse, cleanse with all of our unrighteousness and all of our sins. Lord Jesus, I open up my heart and accept you as my personal Savior and Lord. And I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace and you will lead me into peace, the perfect peace that you will have and have, will give to, want, to those who make you as Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord, now that I am your daughter or I am your son, and I know that I will be in perfect peace always, no matter what in these perilous times. I bless you, Lord, and I thank you for the gift of peace and salvation with God and in me, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. And for all of us who are, you know, for the closing, let me pray with you. And let's close this. Father, we thank you for today, for just bringing to us the shalom. Yes, Lord, he is a person. He is the spirit of God that is within us, the spirit of Christ, the prince of peace that is within us. And Lord, help us that we will align ourselves to what the spirit wants in us as being the spirit of life and peace. And Lord, we pray that we will connect to him in this time of chaos and let us understand his ways where he's bringing us and help us, Lord, that in the midst of weakness and, and things that bothers us and, and shakes us up, Lord, help us 
that the springs of peace through the Holy Spirit, that we will know, Lord God, your word. You will speak to us. You will give us the right people to counsel us, to walk alongside us, the people that are of peace, the peacemakers people, Lord God. I pray that they will be amongst us, surrounding us, and that we will always set our foot on the path to glory and peace and security in Christ Jesus our Lord. We will not fall in away from faith, but our faith will be established in the life and peace and security in Christ. The shalom, God kind of peace in us, operating daily, manifesting its, its glory in our lives. And people are helped. Enemies are helped. This world that is in chaos are helped. And so, Lord, may we be people of peace. And let this peace, your peace, rule and reign in our hearts. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, we thank you for today. May the peace of God, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace and the mercy of our Lord, his faithfulness that is forevermore, that we receive day by day according to his mercies and love and plan and great salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare this to every single one who heard and will obey and listen to their Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless each one. May God's blessings be upon all of us. His peace, his God kind of peace, shalom peace, rule and reign in our hearts today until he comes. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So God bless you all. And I hope that you have been blessed with our topic today and that let us seek God's peace and speak peace to ourselves. This God kind of peace. The peace that is unlike that the world has been offering, giving us. Go seek that peace. That peace is within you. And shalom to everyone today until Christ Jesus comes. Amen. And, and this is now Sister Annie from Crisis Head Fellowship signing off. And don't forget to look at our YouTube for many videos and messages and also websites. And also you can text us on FB Message because we always read them. And we pray for you. And I pray for you. And God knows that he is looking to all those things that we have planned for this little body and yet i hope that it has blessed your heart thank you so much this is our sister annie again regaliza signing off bye-bye god bless